Hello everyone, Giltar here with a model kit review. This time we're looking at the 1 to 100 scale Real Personal Trooper Type 1 R1 model. It's from Kotobukiya's Super Robot Wars or Super Robot Tyson model kit line. And this is a special review because I want to use it as a thank you review, thank you video, to all of my subscribers. I originally intended to do this for reaching my 100 subscriber mark. However, I, I, there was a, a delay in getting this model kit and I've been uh, pretty busy in my personal life recently so I wasn't able to get this review um, done until today. But here we go and I hope you enjoy it. Uh, now, this is a model kit that is, um, is deceptively not complex but it has a lot going for it. So I'm going to actually split this review into three parts. Part 1, I'll cover the model kit details and accessories. In Part 2, I'll cover the articulation and any other details I might have missed. Uh, in Part 3, I'll cover the vehicle form, uh, my pros and cons, and final thoughts. Uh, now, this is a model that came out originally in September of 2008 and retails for 5,800 yen. And that's roughly over $60 uh, at this time. Um, and I'm starting this model kit off with a size comparison. On the left side, we see the 1 to 100 scale RX-782 Gundam, a one-year war version. On the right side, we have the 1 to 144 scale high-grade Universal Sentry RX-782 Gundam. Now, the reason why I use these two particular model kits for scale comparisons is that they're kind of like the, the RX-782 Gundam is basically the average mobile suit um, in terms of, I guess, scale or size, rather. It's an 18 or 18.5 meter tall uh, mobile suit, and I like to use it as a size comparison because it's, it's a good way to measure uh, the size or scale of other model kits to them. Now as you can see, the R1 is slightly taller than the 1 to 100 um, RX-782 Gundam. They're both 1 to 100 scale models. Um, and the R2, or rather R1, I think is about a quarter of an inch taller, um, but you know, not too much taller, but it is also fairly bulky. It has wide shoulders, it has um, some wing components on the back of it. Um, and also added, it has a large shield and a large uh, sort of main beam gun, beam rifle weapon. Uh, so I'll remove these models now that we've got the size comparison uh, completed. As you can see, the R1 is composed of primarily uh, white, red, yellow, blue, and gray uh, parts. Now, all these different colored parts are pre-colored plastic parts. This is a naked build, meaning I've not done any uh, painting, I, I haven't done any panel lining. This is just basically purely out of the box, simply assembled. There's nothing added to it. And again, all these different colored parts are separate pieces of plastic. So there are quite a few pieces in the model, um, which for some people is a good thing, for some people it may not be. I particularly do enjoy more uh, complex builds, more involved builds. So I do like the uh, Super Robot Wars model kits because they have a lot of parts. Uh, now, as far as the accessories go, uh, we'll start off with the large main gun or beam rifle or beam gun or whatever you want to call it. Uh, pretty standard design uh, in terms of you know your you know large mecha guns. It's fairly blocky. Um, I do like this because uh, for a couple of reasons. I just well the barrel part I'm not a big fan of. It is a little too squarish and simple for me. Uh, however, everything from this point on I really do like. First of all, the cartridge or magazine in the back is a, a separate piece of plastic which you can attach. Uh, the handle itself has articulation. It actually can fold in for storage mode and fold back out for basically, I guess, weapon use. Uh, I do like the design of the scope uh, accessory component. It's also removable. And if you take a look in the front there, the, the scope lens is actually a clear green piece of plastic. And it comes pre-colored, so you don't have to do anything to it if you don't want to. Uh, again, it's clear green, and there are a, a few other clear green plastic parts with this model kit. Next up is this large shield, which basically doubles as the nose cone or cockpit section of the vehicle mode. Uh, now, before going any further, this is basically, the R1 is basically a, well, some would say it's a ripoff. Others say it's like a, just an homage or a nod to the Wing Gundam design. Um, and uh, so yeah, if you, any of you guys are wondering, it is pretty much like the Wing Gundam, uh, sort of another version of it, a, a, a derivative version. Uh, now the Super Robot Wars uh, franchise, I believe, is, is licensed, like they are legal sort of um, homages to existing uh, mecha designs. Uh, so I, I wouldn't call it a ripoff, but I would call it heavily derivative a heavily deriv uh, derivative design. Uh, now getting on to the shield, again we have multiple uh, 
uh, plastic bits that are different colors, yellows, blues, whites, grays, uh, reds. Um, and uh, what I really like about this is that it, it's, it's a large, bulky uh, shield accessory, uh, but it also attaches very securely to the arm. In the 1 to 144 scale version of the R1 model, um, the shield would never stay on. It just it wasn't it was too heavy for uh, the peg and port system. But in this one, it just it clips in securely and it's very snug and you know solid and stable. And there's no uh, worry of it falling out. Now the attachment for the uh, arm. Is, uh, has multiple points of articulation. First, it can swivel up and down like this. It can rotate here. And it can also bend here. So you can actually pose the shield on the arm in many different positions, which is quite nice. And now, this also doubles as, uh, again, the nose cone for the vehicle mode. So it can actually fold up and actually has, um, you can um, compact the part here for storage in vehicle mode. So there are actually quite a few points of articulation in simply this shield accessory which I like. Next up are these sort of side guns and they clip onto uh, these polycap joints on the, uh, the, the waist here on the hip and the attachments here uh, actually are just little pieces of plastic that peg in and they do have a hinged point of articulation um, and actually at the joint itself, you can actually move it up and down like this and in addition to rotation and just simple hinge movement. Uh, so there are actually multiple points of articulation for these gun holsters. Uh, and the, these guns just actually clip into the holsters by friction. They just clip in and they're held there quite nicely. The guns themselves, actually, I, I like it better than the uh, long main gun, uh, which I will actually mention that the, uh, the guns have ports on them rectangular ports on the handles. Uh, on the long sort of beam rifle, it has a port on the right side here, none on the left side. So you can only hold it in the right hand with the peg in place. Uh, the, the hand here, the right hand, um, has a rectangular peg on the palm. I don't know if you can make that out. Now, these sidearm type guns actually have a port that goes all the way through the handle. So you can actually hold these with the uh, pegs in them on either the right or left articulated hands with the ports. Uh, I actually like these designs. They're, they're just uh, simple little, um, you know, plain gun designs, but I like them. They're blocky, they're chunky, and they're, um, I don't know, they're, they're the, the prototypical sci-fi energy gun. Um, they do have um, some uh, grooves in them for panel lining and accenting if you choose. What I really like about it is actually the cylinder or drum component is um, separate. You can actually have articulation. You can uh, basically spin it if you want. And in the front, you can now see basically, I don't know, you can, probably can't make it out on the camera, but they, you can see where the uh, shells uh, are inside the drum there. So it's pr pretty nice. Uh, also like the long beam rifle, um, there are some grooves, but because of the sort of dark gray plastic, um, you're not going to want to use black. You might want to use another type of color, maybe perhaps a lighter color to try to bring out the, uh, uh, the accents when you're doing panel lining. Now for the final weapon accessory, uh, on each of these wing units here, um, there's actually a holster for a knife. You just, it has articulation so you can actually pull it out and then pull out this knife. And you have a pair of them. They're these uh, basically like hunting knives with a serrated back edge. And they're very nice weapons. There's no ports on the handle so they don't peg into the hand but they hold in quite nicely into the uh, articulated hands. Uh, which we'll get into next. Uh, we have several hands that come with the model kit. Uh, you have a left and right pair of uh, articulated hands with a ball joint for the thumb connection, uh, but for the uh, fingers themselves, they're just on hinges. So they swivel or hinge in and out, but they don't move around as if they were on a ball joint. And again, both the left and right hand have these rectangular pegs on the palms there for securing the uh, pistol and uh, long rifle weapons. You have a right hand fixed pose hand, which is kind of like in a chop position. And then you have a left hand sort of uh, grasping or sort of outreaching, stretched out uh, sort of palm position hand. And then you also have a left and right chromed fist hand accessory. Um, I only have the right hand assembled, but they're basically two halves of the fist and a back plate for the uh, back of the hand. Now in addition to those hands, we also have a pair of uh, basically attachment parts for vehicle mode. Uh, you use these to secure some of the robot bits when you put it into its sort of fighter mode. 
And finally, we have the display stand, uh, which is actually quite nice. It's not only a display stand for both robot and vehicle mode, um, it could also double as a storage uh, component. Uh, this is the attachment for robot mode up here. This is the attachment for vehicle mode. If you want to uh, turn it into a storage rack, you basically remove the, the, the arm here and you attach it to the back, which I won't do because you, know, you don't need to see that, but um, these little parts of the back you can use to store uh, different parts of the uh, model when you're not in use. So you can put the storage assembly there, different parts there. On the front you would put the shield on this side, which pegs in, and the uh, beam rifle on that side. So that concludes part one of the review. I'll be back in part two with the articulation. Uh, thank you for watching, and I hope you guys enjoyed the review so far.